that's how the knee scorpion basically is designed it's an anti grade device primarily we are going to talk 80% of the case presentations today about the knee scorpion as we know we also have a very nice shoulder scorpion and you'll be surprised uh, at least a few of you that the shoulder scorpion also has some usage in the knee so for me in my uh, acl instrumentation set these particular scorpion devices are always available and we'll see with case presentations why is that so the friend of the knee scorpion or the shoulder scorpion is the passport cannula now these are very unique uh, devices with arthrex with nobody else really has it's a flexible cannula that helps you to do suture management very very easily it helps you to shift the scopes so what you can see in the picture is that you can actually put two passport cannulas one you can use for instrumentation and alternately as you saw since morning we keep shifting the scope into the medial portal to visualize the acl footprint you need to shift the scope into the medial portal when you're doing lateral meniscus work so you don't need to keep on searching for the track you can easily shift so that's something very important one of the most common indication of the knee scorpion is side to side stitches <clears throat> can i have a pointer so the side to side stitches are especially relevant uh, i want uh, on the video until uh, the lights are off so everybody can appreciate so the most common indication for a side to side repair is a radial tear near the lateral meniscus root and uh, as you saw in the morning uh, session also wherein an another device was used for the same purpose uh, i'll try to show why the knee scorpion makes life very easy i think we'll start the video so that's the lateral meniscus root it's the right knee and the visualization is from the medial portal the instrumentations are coming from the anterolateral portal that's the knee scorpion you're taking the bite through that flimsy lateral meniscus root flap you, you take a zero number fiber wire you then can take a transpetalar tendon portal for suture management initially you can do this you can station up the suture which is come from the superior surface there and the inferior surface suture is now loaded again and you take a bite through the main bulk of the lateral meniscus you then place a cannula initially we used to use rigid cannulas now we use these passport cannulas retrieve both the sutures and then you tie a non sliding knot in the morning you saw uh, the sliding knot being applied if the tissue quality is poor be careful try to put a non sliding knot so a simple low profile side to side stitch in a radial tear especially near the root it works wonderfully well and then you can additionally uh, put an all inside device to secure the meniscus to the capsule in this way you will get a very strong construct the most uh, second most important indication for the knee scorpion is when you are treating a horizontal cleavage tear in the past you used to do a partial meniscectomy you used to remove the unstable flap and keep the stable flap lately we have realized that these sort of tears come in younger individuals and if you land, land up doing this you'll actually lose most of the meniscus so the first rule is always repair even if there is a portion which you want to resect first repair and then resect because when you put your shaver you might land up with suddenly no more meniscus to repair so that's the first rule so circumferential compression stitches also called as hail bale stitches so for a horizontal cleavage tear lateral meniscus again visualization from the anterolateral portal instrument coming from the anteromedial portal turn the device away from the cartilage circumferentially so you're taking the bite through the entire meniscus and then you keep the post on the inferior stitch so that the knot goes on the under surface and you just tie a knot you can do it sequentially also let us say you are unable to take a single bite through and through you can do it sequentially you can take the bite through the inferior leaf then load the suture again take the bite through the superior leaf and then tie a knot and i'll show you some videos for the same so we saw side to side stitches with the help of the knee scorpion we saw circumferential compression stitches with the help of the knee scorpion two indications we have covered now one of the very good indications is a longitudinal tear so just orient yourself through this now you are this is the left knee you are visualizing from the anterior medial portal so it's a acl tear so you have gone into the view from the anterior medial portal into the posterior lateral corner so that's the lateral meniscus near the root longitudinal tear now it's very difficult to do these repairs even with the all inside devices because the vessel is right behind there i was asking for the pointer if you could please give me the pointer please 
so the vessels are right there right behind the root so when you are doing your all inside devices you heard in the morning also you are very concerned if the vessels are nearby you heard that you know you need to look in the mri also if there's any aberrant vessel so the knee scorpion works wonders here so the knee scorpion works wonders because you are no, nowhere near the capsule and you will see the video nicely demonstrating this technique so you are prepare, preparing the uh, surfaces you are rasping you are using a small joint shaver blade now you are coming with the knee scorpion you are taking a bite through the superior surface now the trick is you need to identify the suture from this rent in the longitudinal tear and take the inferior suture load it again onto the scorpion and you have a nice vertical mattress kind of a configuration you can see i've already placed one suture there so very uh, cost effective very safe because you're not putting any devices near the capsule near the root so third indication a longitudinal tear can be tackled with multiple such sutures and you get a nice robust construct so that's the final image so you've taken multiple sutures cost effective you get a robust repair you can always put a fibrin clot you can uh, sandwich it in that tear especially if it's an isolated uh, meniscus tear we see such complex lateral meniscus tears in footballers and cricketers uh, in which case we usually put a fibrin clot to sandwich i have just included the lasso device also because i saw that none of the speakers today are going to cover this i think the shoulder lassos are also very relevant for meniscus repairs i'm sure ramp etc will be covered now this is a lateral meniscus root avulsion or a root tear so you can see that the acl graft has been passed uh, and there is a lateral meniscus root tear and this is the left knee the visualization is from the anteromedial portal the passport canal is in the anterolateral portal you come with the lasso you take a bite through the root you can actually suture it onto the acl itself if only part of the root is uh, detached and you can simply tie a knot so zero number fiber wires 20 fiber wires are low profile suture material available for such repairs another lateral meniscus root avulsion where the entire root is avulsed now this is where the utility of the shoulder scorpion also comes in so i have placed an anchor now i have prepared that area i have placed an anchor a soft anchor there and then your shoulder scorpion so visualization now again left knee visualization from the anterolateral portal passport cannula in the medial portal soft anchor has been placed double loaded sutures are there the sutures are loaded onto the shoulder scorpion now because these are number 2 sutures you need to remember that the knee scorpion takes only 0 and 20 fiber wire you cannot load a number 2 suture and that's where the role the minute a number 2 suture has to be used the role of shoulder scorpion comes in so that's the shoulder scorpion coming in two bites have been taken third suture is being loaded put traction on the previous sutures so that you can take a nice bite protect the cartilage turn the device away from the cartilage and you can take these sort of mattress sutures to get a very nice robust lateral meniscus root repair sometimes you need to have these techniques available in cases of children who are having paramenisical cysts by the time you land up taking out the paramenisical cyst sometimes you can have a lateral meniscus root being completely weak so have the shoulder anchors for your knee cases also and your shoulder instruments for your knee cases also so that's the take home message you can always create a mason allen kind of a construct wherein the sutures are mattress and one suture is going medial to the mattress sutures so that you are having a rip stop configuration so whenever you take a suture medial to the mattress sutures you get a rip stop configuration so these are the strong constructs that you can create with these anti grade devices and that's how you tie the sutures to get a nice robust lateral meniscus root repair uh quickly about the micro suture lasso again that's something which is very useful for me in my practice this is a uh left knee medial meniscus the root repair has been uh, done there the sutures have been pulled into the tunnel not tied i have placed an anchor for the centralization the micro suture lasso is comes in two variations it comes in straight and curved the curved one works beautifully to retrieve these sutures at the meniscal capsular junction to have a centralization stitch 
Now, this is a presentation, ironically, from uh, PKC 2016. I think these were the early days of the knee scorpion and we were not aware as to how to take the bite. So, I have taken it near the root area, which is not of good quality. And initially, we were not aware how, as to uh, the tapes also were not available. So, now you've got these mini tapes. And now today, as we discussed, finally, we know it should be mini tapes and it should be a looped construct, a locked looped construct. In those days, we didn't know it. So, you, we were using simple fiber wires. So, we were using ethylon on to zero number ethylon on to the knee scorpion and shuttling a fiber wire and using either simple locking sutures like this, a single loop stitch. And I am showing this because even today I am using this in a very unique way and that is what I want to show you. Manish wanted me to. So that's the double loop stitch. So when you have a fiber wire, you want to increase the security, you can use a double loop. I'll just show it again. So create a double loop like so and load the sutures onto that double loop. So you get a double security in case of a fiber wire. And this works very well and I'll show you how I use it in my portfolio today. So this is way back in 2016 where we had presented our initial work about root repairs. You get a nice construct. So that was the final repair done with fiber wires in those days. Today we are using the knee scorpion. So what I do is I load the zero number fiber wire onto the knee scorpion in a looped fashion like you saw in the morning. And then you shuttle the tape over the looped zero number fiber wire. And that tape will then be locked in a loop fashion. So loop, the suture is again loaded onto it. The mini suture tape is loaded onto it. That is shuttled. So that's the tape coming in. And then you create a loop construct outside and when you pull onto the free ends, the loop enters into the joint. So that's the loop entering. So I take two such loop stitches and sometimes I even take a, the same zero number fiber wire. I use it again in that double loop fashion. So two tapes and I, I don't discard that zero number fiber wire I'm not able to advance so that's the uh, suture so the even the zero number suture which you're using to shuttle you don't waste it you take it uh, through the uh, tissue near the root which is not of great quality and therefore you secure it with a double looped construct and what works very well is when you are tightening on the tibial side on over a ABS button <laughs> You tension, so that's the three sutures, you shuttle it into the tunnel. You tension this suture first because it's through the best quality tissue. This suture next and this suture the last. So the chances of ripping off reduces because you've got secure fixation. So that's my present way of handling these repairs. So as you can see, the loop portion is entered into the tunnel. So I like that. I like that there is a broader surface healing like you saw Dr. Dinshaw also uh, showing. You want a broader surface healing and you want the loop to enter into that tunnel. Finally, primary ACL repair, you can use the shoulder scorpion. You can literally use it like a needle holder. So you take the fiber wire and take multiple sutures across the ACL stump and you secure it to a knotless swivel lock anchor and you can do a primary ACL repair for this type of Sherman type one ACL tears. So that's the second pass. You can take multiple such passes you can make sure you can incorporate both the postlateral fiber, postlateral bundle fibers and the anteromedial bundle fibers. You can use two swivel locks. You can use a single swivel lock, various con uh, configurations. So that's the swivel lock coming in and that's the repair. Now this is usually reserved in my practice for cases which is usually multi ligaments, low demand individuals, etc. Our, our uh, purpose nowadays is to preserve the remnant. So what do we do in such cases? So this is the case. There's a significant amount of remnant. You don't feel like taking it out. So what I do is, and Arthrex has got a wonderful device called as a fiber link, which I use extensively in the shoulder for rotator cuff repair and also for stumps like this. So you load the fiber link onto the shoulder scorpion and take a bite through the stump. It is a link, so it creates a natural loop. And that loop you will use to load onto the tight rope button itself. Now this is the tight rope which is loaded onto a doubled semi-t because there is significant amount of remnant. 
if you want to do a true remnant preservation you can't have a four strand graft you can't have a 9 mm graft and then say there is significant remnant preservation so in true remnant preservation you have to have a thinner graft so that's a doubled or i think a triple semity loaded onto the uh for tight rope and the tight rope takes the fiber link so when you pull on the fiber link it works like a scaffold for your graft so that's a true augmentation so and you have tensioned the fiber link onto the button so at the end of the procedure the shortening strands the white sutures of the tight rope you will tie to the fiber link over the button so it like it works like a proper scaffold exactly in the direction of your graft and there will be no impingement whatsoever because there is no risk of cyclops lesion it is not going to fall off so these are the various uh, advantages so my take home message keep both the knee and the shoulder scorpion as an important uh, weapon in your armamentarium to tackle these variety of googlies of complex meniscus tears along with everything else that's going to be discussed by my colleagues today like the zone navigator fiber stitch etc thank you very much